Welcome to the commentary for episode two of season one of Sam and Max. I'm Jared Emerson Johnson. I was the composer and sound effects uh, and voice guy. I'm Charlie Smith. I did some scripting. I'm Sean Scrow. I'm technical director. I did some effects and <clears throat> character models and whatnot. I'm Marco Bresso. I did choreography. This one's very orange. Very orange. Very orange. This was this the one where they started, uh, it was the second episode and they started guessing the rainbow color scheme. I know, already, yeah. Yeah, no. it, it only took two. Scary. Very, and then you... Very smart, Seven Max fans, very yeah. smart, very perceptive. I had a lot of fun with this one. I, I, uh... Well, I think it was starting in this episode, I realized that uh, it would be very fun to have a little Poof. sort of musical um, uh, genre play with the, in the openings of each one. The next one sort of has a circus thing going on, and the nice. fourth one has a little, obviously a little Americana thing going. Into the pickle mobile. The what? His pickle mobile on the, on the wall. Yeah, the speed oh, yeah, picture. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The speed pickle. That's Kim's pickle. Yes. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, for uh, starting from episode two, we had to uh, replace the actor we had cast as Max because of some serious health problems. Um, so this is the uh, first work of William Caston, who, who uh, stepped in and really got us out of a bind and did the rest of the uh, season and I think that's an incredible Max voice. Yeah, they really got better every episode. Yeah. For making chores, he's, his reads are, are really good to work They're on. They're very, very expressive. He's a, he's a pro. You didn't see those legs. Did we? No, they didn't. There were no legs at the bottom of the TV. You want to talk about how we... Yeah, she's actually a full model stuffed inside that TV. <laughs> really? Flattened a little bit. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Flattened quite a bit. That's why all this TV stuff is a pain. Because we don't have render to texture. So we actually have to shove it all in there. That would be a whole lot of data if we did it all through through textures or a movie file. No, but if you can, if you do render to texture, you can have everything off screen and render it. I see. Render it to a, another texture which gets displayed elsewhere. We'll have it in the future. Yeah. This is a... We, this is a very similar thing to what you see in episode 5 when Sam goes flat. It's the same technique. It's just she's much smaller to fit in the TV. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well adjusted. The only way. I could use a shave. I'll say. Your 5 o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. <laughs> that little musical stinger that keeps appearing is, is a very vague reference to uh, one of the themes uh, Clint Jake and Peter McConnell put together for Hit the Road for the Wacker Whack Rat game. Nice. There's a whole new music cue and it's just a little tiny snippet of it whenever Jimmy does anything. That Bosco line was one of everybody's favorites. Everybody loves to hear Tally Ho Foo. Yeah. <laughs> I call diseased. Thank you. Thank you. First Where'd the shaving king go? To thank all the little people. Zip it. Okay, you realize your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're grief-stricken. Now, show me the emotion. Uh, boo-hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a natural Botox reader. Listen, go ahead. Uh, this sequence was choreographed by Pete Sakel. Um... He uh, is not going to make it in for any of these recordings, but he he did a great job on uh, just a whole boatload of choreography through all the episodes. This is a great example of, of his work. Really hits emotion well on top of the lines. And Yeah, we started to really push the moods a lot more starting in episode two. It's, Definitely. It's a new technology. The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it. Sam's brow sticks out a little bit too much, though. <laughs> It's, uh, we were all learning lessons through on the first episodes. That Bravo! Such realism. Such awesome. Help make four, five, and six all the great ones that they are. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown. You really don't want to know. Filming immediately. 
Let's hurry, Sam. We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to... This is straight into situation comedy here. Right. Little Midtown Cowboys. Theme song here. It's a great theme song. I tried to use every single one of them that you delivered to us. Here. They're probably heading a cow. That they're probably heading a cow. Credit goes to Jake Rodkin for that for coming up with that uh, the phrase. That phrase. Awesome. Yeah. They're they're probably heading a cow. I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. That cow is not the same cow from Bone. <laughs> it's a different model. Keep telling yourself that. Different texture. It is. I know. It is. I know. It's, I just it's love how it's your torch. <laughs> that, t that texture has never showed up on bone either. We never had a brown spotted like that. Nope. <clears throat> However, I think the eyelashes on the cow are a reuse. Yeah. There we go. And Featherly is not the same chicken from bone either. No. He's more of a rooster, he's but not He's totally. sort of more of a rooster, but he's also, I don't know. I have a theory that Mr. Featherly might might be a girl. Yeah. Well, he's he's definitely he's sort of, he's got chicken traits of both. Um, he was a fun character to work with for choreography. It's very uh, interesting to try and get a chicken to express. Yep. He's probably my favorite character. <laughs> He's a fun character, making him walk around and flap around. And, oh, God. <laughs> and of course, that. The audience, the audience sounds certainly make, make this certainly scene for me. You couldn't do a uh, a sitcom takeoff no. without without a bunch of canned laughter. No, yeah, it's funny. Whatever stuff is really good. What's it called in English? It's the. Uh, I really enjoyed the angle of that particular shot as well, with the, with uh, the cow kind of sticking in there, waggling you know. tail, just sort of. <laughs> that is my favorite. <laughs> what? <laughs> and this spitting that goes on just a little bit too long. Yeah, it was huge. I just had to keep on animating it. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. <laughs> yes, tied in with a point up left. Uh, Everyone's point up. Yeah, we use point ups. Uh, they turn up a lot. We try not to use them too much, but... Don't call me for at least an hour. <laughs> Puzzle achieved. Yep. Those are always difficult shots too, whenever we're passing one thing to another character. Always have to do a little staging trick or something to get them right in the perfect spot. This is one of my favorite uh, uh, opening songs that they have for... Yeah. It's a wacky trumpet, so I think. It's sort of, yeah, it's a wacky trumpet. I had the the uh, hardest time getting getting the trumpeter to, to play it because it was just so high, and um, he was he kept you know talking about how I uh, you, know, you should have told me to bring a piccolo trumpet, but the the quality is very different with a piccolo trumpet, and I wanted it to just be that biting, ridiculously high squealing sort of baroque sound, and uh, he nailed it eventually and stopped complaining. It was nice. Came out very well. Those hats are exactly the same model from Bone. Oh, so there is <laughs> one, of the, one of the only cases where we use the exact same model. <laughs> of course, we should note that Max's is scaled, of course. So, yeah. I love MSG. <laughs> it's kind of sad that more, most Chinese places don't put enough in, it, in their food anymore. <laughs> like, you used to be able to get MSG in your food and like feel drunk afterwards, but now... Wow. Can we say enough about roofing tile shards? Obviously we can. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And the magic of TV... <laughs> broil the giant pot. Gorgeous, that looks tasty. Yeah, gorgeous cake. Where did the icing come from? <laughs> that was the MSG. <laughs> oh, I see. Cue! Yay, rainbows! <laughs> I thought I'd only have to do rainbows for one episode. Little did you know. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Another spastic little theme song here. <laughs> hmm. The question is, am I blue? I remember in the voice sessions for, for this one, when we were first meeting Hugh, and we knew that he was going to be uh, coming back in a big way later in the season. And um, I think, you know, Brendan and I had talked a little bit about the characterization from him, and we had a basic idea, but we... When we got into the uh, the studio with David Boyle and, and really got going, um, he was just doing all of this really out there stuff. And I just remember 
and we were just, I mean, we, we had more fun recording him for episode two than I think we did doing any other voice for the rest of the whole season, and he just was so out of control that it, I was almost like, not sure if it was going to really work. I was just like, it, it, this is like really crazy. And we got a lot of safeties, you know, in case uh, in case it wasn't working. But then when we had it all edited and put it in the game, it was just like, oh my god, this is this is the greatest character of all time. It's just so out of control. Yeah, the thing that sucks though is since his voice is so crazy, the lip sync on him doesn't right. process very well. So we have to always Sorry have to go that. back and <laughs> do a lot of it by hand and just clean it up. So this is have the, this uh, is just gross. It's the effing with effing with the soda poppers theme ought to come back here. <laughs> <laughs> it is really gross. <laughs> yeah, the best part is texturing afterwards. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> with some fava beans. Exactly. <laughs> the blur effect turned out much better than I expected. This, I had really had no idea what to do, and then this, I tried one thing and it looked great. <laughs> right off the bat, I got lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. <laughs> Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call Just Like Someone Else's Song, Only Somehow Better. <laughs> Chomping on a crunchy silver spoon. <laughs> about the rings on the great racket. All those little tunes. David Nolan was just making them up in the in the booth. And didn't have anything planned. So oh yeah. The banjo. I had to time to it after the fact. And uh, it's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it comes across really well. It, it uh, looks very planned, even though it wasn't. And you're less sloppy than my brother. You got. He doesn't even sounds. care. Oh. Peepers is the most terrifying of the poppers, in my opinion. He's just <laughs> seems like he might be a sociopath. It's his gigantic eyes staring me down. There's something wrong with that guy. This microphone is <laughs> We all love Myra's little <laughs> grip <laughs> thing. <laughs> Arms so short she can't even really put her hands together. <laughs> That's funny, I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. It becomes a problem sometimes, like when you need to move a microphone across a right. desk. Yeah, yeah, you need to grab her. <laughs> yes. Max looks so happy. <laughs> it's because the bear looks awesome. I know. <laughs> that is one of my this most disturbing lines to me, shadier than a fat man's ankles. <laughs> the swirling bear head is really a scary thing. It's very... it's like poltergeist or something. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would have been if the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd like to mention my pal Sam and something that happened the other day. Anecdotes about other celebrities, even ones as dubious as you two, there was a debate about the sparks on the microphone as far as audio is concerned, and it's always tricky with, with those kinds of things in these games because, you know, obviously it ought to be going but it, it becomes prohibitively irritating if you actually do that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to think of another example. <laughs> there she goes. It's the Darth Vader effect. Hey, uh, <laughs> Bessie just gets the hell out of there. creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few Little does Sam know. To hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious. <laughs> that, that, that's a very puzzling <laughs> line. <laughs> On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. <laughs> familiar, <laughs> some familiar <laughs> silhouettes in the audience. Myra will have yeah. us back on the show again soon. Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see... And this is my little closing. The plot thickens musical theme here. The vibes. That puddle looked familiar that was on the table there. Yeah. <laughs> 
let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. But he gets the feet. Episode 2, Sam and Max. Thank you for watching. It's a good one. Yeah.